Hey y'all, it's Betsy and Diddy from Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another gardening video. So today I'm going to be planting a few summer annuals and one or two perennials. It is finally way past warm enough in the south, zone 8B, to put these things in the ground. You can see the garden behind me is coming alive. Things are starting to bloom and bud. Um, I took everything out of my car and was getting ready to go distribute it throughout the garden where I want to plant everything and I figured this would be a great opening shot with everything all together. So I'm just going to pop down here and go over what we are planting today. Of course there will be lots more to come with the season, but went to the plant store with a very specific list because you know your girl will just buy everything if I don't have a plan. So. I have purchased five lantana. So these are very pretty yellow and pink lantana. They get, I believe 20, 20 to 26 high and 24 by 36 wide. I was looking for a few of these for right in front of my porch, as well as down among the garden. I have a few empty spots. I thought they would look really pretty. I was looking for the darker pink lantana, um, but they were all sold out. And I couldn't decide between the two, so I went with what they had, obviously. But I think this was a better choice anyways. I tend to pick pinks, light pink, dark pink, all the pinks. And most of where these are going, they are right next to my Proven Winner Super Tunia Vista Bubblegum, which is that pop of bright pink. So I think this pale yellow will be a really nice contrast and they'll complement each other really well. So three for in front of the porch, two down in the garden, actually on either side of the bubblegum island. So from there, I have three of the April night salvia. This is technically an annual salvia, but it does typically come back in our zone. No, it's a perennial. So it will come back in most zones. I was wondering about that because I was like, it is known for being the earlier blooming cousin of the May night salvia, and that wouldn't work if it wasn't a perennial. So I got three of these. I had some blue salvia. There's still a couple there right on the other side of my porch, and they were just the inexpensive garden salvia, run of the mill, regular little guys. They're adorable, but they come back very sporadically, um, and they don't come back kind of where I want them. And so I planted three groups three years ago, and now I have one really good group, one eh group, and one group that's died all together. So I'm gonna move the eh group down with the good group, and I'm gonna plant these in their place, and hopefully these will be a much stronger show every year and come back reliably for us. That's the goal. Then I have my tall salvia, and this is a I'll put all the pictures up on the screen, but I believe it's a red wine salvia. It's also a perennial. It gets really tall, 30 inches. So I want it to be one of those like middle to back of the border kind of plants. It also gets pretty wide, which is great because I have a medium sized spot for it where I don't really have room for three plants, but one small plant wouldn't be enough. So I'm hoping this one plant, the salvias, salvias will typically get pretty big. Um, so I'm hoping he will settle in and love that spot and give us pretty blooms all season long. Then I have one Proven, win proven Winners Pugster Pinker Dwarf Butterfly Bush. Now I planted two of these last year, but I got them on the clearance rack at the very end of the season and one of them didn't make it. So I was very excited. I have been looking for one to replace the one I lost. And this one I got from Marvin's, which is Great little town shop. I know it's not like local, but it's local-esque. Um, they do a really good job at a lot of things, but watering the plants is not one of them. And I can say that because my cousin works in the garden center. Um, <laughs> but I was very excited when I saw this. I grabbed it right away. I'm going to pop it in the ground, water the heck out of it, and hope that it catches up to its big brother. Last but not least, I have a little six pack of Impatience 
I just think they're so pretty. I've I've done Vinca for a couple years now because I have so much sun. <coughs> But I always look at the impatience and I don't know why I want them so bad. They're almost the same as Vinca, but for some reason they just appeal to me more than Vinca. And so I've looked at these every time I've been at the store for the last month. And I finally just said, I'm going to get them. I have a spot down by the tree that does not have anything in it. As you know, we have been planting things around that tree that are perennials and will come back. Cyclamens, ferns, peonies, lupins, um, and they're all doing really well. But to the left of that, in between two um, lambs here, I have kind of an open spot. So I figured we'd pop three of those there. And I have another shady spot by the peonies under this tree that has nothing in it. So three here, three there. Hopefully they'll be happy. I'll get my little pops of impatience and uh, and hopefully that will hold me over because I, I, they, I don't have any other shady spots for more of them. So we're going to get started. I have been working on the raised beds all day and it has been hot as heck. And so I was waiting for the cool um, afternoon breezes to plant all of these things because I have found in the last week, anything I plant in the heat of the day just stresses so much. So I was trying to save these. They've been under my shade tree all day. I'm going to go ahead and plant them water them in and then I'll watch them extra tomorrow if they need a little extra water but I'm popping them in the ground now because it is supposed to rain all weekend Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday and I want to give them all the best chance possible so plant them in the evening shade let it rain they should all establish and do really well so we're going to get started especially because some of these things like the lantana have to uh I have to remove pansies to plant them. So we're gonna have to do a little garden maintenance as we go and place the spring things. Technically fall, winter, spring, because pansies go all season for us here with our summer color. I'm very excited. Let's go.
All right, so it is the next day. Got too dark to film the uh, walkthrough. So right down in front of the shed, you can see our new proven winners, Puckster Pinker Butterfly Bush to match our other one. This side just didn't do as well. Maybe it's the sun, but it has very even light until the evening and then the shed shades this half. So thinking maybe this part needs a little more water in the late afternoon or a little shade. Thinking about putting a crate myrtle tree right here to help. So either way, let's pop over at, to the top of the hill and I will walk you through everything we planted. All right, so starting up here, we've got the shed with the butterfly bush. We've got our impatience here. They're just so pretty. Now these will grow together. You wanna to place them about 12 inches apart and they will form a nice little clump. We did have to move our Super Tunia Vista bubblegum over because it gets massive. I'm expecting it to really fill in a lot of this space. This is a shadier location. So this one may not get as big as some of the ones in the sun, but it is already quadrupled in size in two weeks. So obviously the daffodil foliage won't be here. We've got foxgloves and lilies back here. Peony that will probably grow, but I just planted these tubers. I've got one, two, three. This is the only one doing really well in this spot. Um, and so it will grow this year, but it won't grow a lot and it probably won't bloom for several years. So the impatient should be pretty happy here and they will fill in this space before the peonies and the perennials get big enough to do so. So gonna come down the way. Still gotta take out all these pansies, but dun da da dun. So we took out first step in front of the porch, took out all of these pansies. The muscari foliage here, we're going to leave to die back because they should overwinter and come up next season for us. Um, we did take the daffodil foliage out. They have come up, but they have not bloomed for us in a couple years. So I'm gonna let them soak in the sun, die down, and then refrigerate them this winter. Uh, try to get some more cold back in them and they may just be done. So either way, we planted one, two, three lantanas here, which may be like so much overkill. It's not even funny. One plant is supposed to get 36 inches wide. So technically we really could have done two. We probably could have done one if we'd put some other things with it, but I planted two super tunia vista bubble gums here last year. I planted vincas here the year before, and right across the way, I had super tunias last year and vinca the year before, and they have literally the same light, but they did great over here, took off, grew huge in this spot. Like, you can see my, uh, my lambs here while well, it's loving its life, literally right here, right here something about this spot things struggle like look at all these lambs here just on the struggle bus so instead of one or two we are going for overkill i'm putting three and if it's too much i'll cut it back i'll move some we'll figure it out but i'd rather go too much and hopefully they can grow together and not have so much of a struggle to fill the entire space so my thoughts here and leave a comment down below because i'm still trying to decide is I'm thinking I might have to give up the ghost on the lambs here. This is its third year in this spot. And I keep planting new lambs here, here every year. It takes off for a minute and then it just, it just dies. And I think the reason is sitting right over here. Hey, you with the face. She's like, you can't see me. I didn't do anything. Regardless of what I try, she goes in right here, sits under the porch in the shade, and then comes out this way. So I'm thinking I need to plant some tall things in this space so that she can't do that. Because um, she can walk right over the lambs here. So I'm thinking 
a drift of white cone flowers in the back. I've got a bunch growing as seeds. Um, they're, they're baby plants right now. They may not bloom for us this year, but they will get nice big foliage this year and they'll come back every year. So it's either that or Proven Winners Truffula Pink Gumfrina, which also gets pretty big. And if I can fit it, I'm thinking one, two Gumfrina and a, a wave of comb flower in the back. That might be way too much. Stop walking through the lambs here. All right. On this side, I did take out the pansies that were starting to, you know, smother this guy, but they're still blooming really pretty. So I'm not going to take them out just yet. I'm just going to leave these little pockets until we need to. But I planted the one, two, three April night salvia. We probably need to come in here and deadhead them but I think that's gonna be a really nice texture behind these pincushion flowers. They're really tall, upright. They will give us big blooms and structure. And then the pincushion flowers, this is the pink mist, is very open and airy. So we've got our little supertunia pincushions just tried to die. Did you guys feel that? Our salvia, I've got a Barbara Mitchell daylily right here. And then I've got one, two, three short pink cone flowers here. So I'm, I still have room right in here. I might have to plant something, but I'm hoping. Two years ago when I planted vinca here, they keep receding. See that little vinca? This is a, a pansy. <laughs> but look, more vinca. So if I get enough vinca babies in this area, I'll pull the ones through the plants I don't need and I'll leave the ones up here. Free plants are the best plants. There's no reason to pull the free plants and replace them with not free plants. <laughs> I just planted this catmint in a video, talk about another way too close together for some reason, I thought in my brain that 30 inches was like from here to here. My brain was like not calculating. 30 inches is like from here to here. So I have two plants and a spot where I should have one plant. But they're already planted. They're perennial, so they will take a while to get to that full size. I'm just going to leave them. And if I need to move one next year because one doesn't make it or they both made it and they're fabulous, then I'll move it next year. Fox love babies. And oh my goodness, do you see this homestead verbena? Down the way, the purple, down here. Do you see this purple going to town? First thing that bloomed in the garden this year. Dozens upon dozens of blooms this year. I planted that one. I planted this one at the same time. This one is just starting to bud up. It's crazy. All right, so now we have one, two lantana. So I have one, two, three, four, five Super Tunia Vista bubblegum. These are actually coming back from last year. In our zone, they will come back. And you can see two of them, I guess the favorite two, I don't know, already have blooms. All these ranunculus were gorgeous this spring, but they are dying back now. So they will die back. The super tunia will come up. This will be a sea of pink. And then we will have the lantana. Now, what I didn't realize when I was planting it is it's not symmetrical. <laughs> this lantana is on the inside of this rose bush. And this lantana is on the outside of that rose bush. Technically, it should be right here. But right here is really close to these things, which is why I planted it on the outside. So I could move this one, but then it would be in the middle of our raspberry cream gunfrina. None of that makes sense. So we're going for the same concept as eyebrows. These are sisters, not twins. They don't have to be perfectly symmetrical. They will be around our super tunias. And look at this color 
when this is a riot of blooms. Won't that be stunning? I cannot wait until later in the season, especially because this is a perennial and these come back in our zone. So if they like their spots, they should keep coming back for us every year. Of course, the super tunias coming back in our zone are not always 100% effective. You can see in the window boxes, almost all of them came back, but you're gonna have to buy a replacement for this one. Go figure. I double checked the drip is working in that box. So who knows? And then the pride and joy of my collection, my new saucy wine salvia. This guy gets 30 tall by 30 wide. So he should fill in this spot pretty nicely. I planted a whole grove of zinnias right here, but they are on the struggle bus. So they may not make it, I did also direct seed a whole bunch of zinnias here, the same type. They are a um, pink, I can't remember the name right now. They are a two foot high pink zinnia. And if they come in, that will be glorious. This butterfly bush is purple. Here's the blue salvia I moved. So you can see that right here is the line. So everything from here left came back from last year this right here was the original grouping and so it's starting to spread out behind it this is the eh grouping from down the way that we transplanted now it looks like this one up here is struggling a bit that's okay this bit right here was all one giant root clump it looks great this was a tiny root clump that i wasn't sure it would make it so you know, if any of it lives, great. If not, at least, you know, we still have this part that will for sure already starting to bloom. But you see what I mean? Like, these are beautiful plants. They're like a dollar a plant, 50 cents a plant. I got them three years ago in a 12-pack and planted four, four, and four. So, you know, they're annuals. They're, they're coming back for me because we live in a tropical-ish zone. I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue with them. I'm just going to enjoy whatever they do. Good enough. So on the other hand, I have a whole host of <laughs> white and pink zinnias that had been planted up here around the butterfly bush last year. And they have somehow seeded themselves back here, but they are also two foot varieties. So I don't think Behind this rose, they will be able to be seen. So I will probably transplant them once they get big enough. And if these don't work, I'll just pop them up here. But they're white and pink, which would contrast a little with our pretty, pretty impatience. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fight with it. Like I said, free plants are the best plants. If these die and these live, it was meant to be especially because this was seed and that was free. So I'm not going to go out and buy plants to replace my free or seeds. That doesn't make any sense. So either way, before I go, sweet little update. My peonies, you can see one, two. There's one back here coming up. Another one down here. Three. Four. five, six shoots, all coming up except for one. And then the cyclamen that we all planted together, the pink ones, we knew when we planted these that they were at the end of their season, but they are still giving us blooms occasionally. You can see there's buds on this plant. So as long as they are flowering, that's great. Once they are done, we will still have these beautiful ivy-like leaves, but our purple tubers have started to come up. Look at these little fairies. So cyclamen are interesting because they pop up their blooms before their foliage. The foliage comes after. And most plants, as you know, are the opposite. So a couple more down here. And they're starting, there was one down here, but it is faded now. 
So apparently these are loving their spots, but ferns, cyclamen, peonies, everything we're putting in here is all very immature. This is probably going to be a couple years before it really fills in, but it's all perennial, so I'll take it. We didn't do nearly as many annuals this year. I thought this was going to be an annual video. That's almost what I said at the beginning. And I want to say three of the four things I bought, perennial, perennial, or April night, perennial. But you know, it is a catch 22 because perennials come back and they bloom beautifully when they do bloom. And so they're typically a little more expensive, but you enjoy them year after year. You don't have to replant them. We love that. But they don't bloom the entire season the way annuals do. Annuals, you plant once, they come out at the end of the season, but they bloom from plant to frost continuously. And in my zone, you know, a lot of them, like their super tunias, like the truffle pink gum frena, like the sweet alyssum, um, they'll all come back. They're tender perennials, meaning as long as we don't get a hard frost or freeze, they survive. So very lucky in that. Of course, they're not as reliable, but I will take it. Either way, thought this was going to be an annual video. It's more of a perennial video. So makes sense. I grew a ton of annuals and milk jugs, so I didn't need to buy as many. I am winning life. I will see y'all in the next video quick before I go. When I was shopping for a salvia to put in this spot, all I knew is I wanted a tall, happy salvia that would get tall, 30 inches or bigger, and fill in, like I said, that whole medium spaced spot. But I wasn't really, you know, picky on color. I prefer a red or a wine or a pink. But if I had found a blue, I would have gone with a blue as well. Um, but I am so happy with this saucy red wine color because I have a butterfly bush here and then right behind it, saucy wine. And on this side, I have my butterfly bush and behind it, the Laura Pedlum, which is that nice burgundy color. I have the three Laura Pedlum here and I have three Mandina here that I replaced last year. So they're much smaller still. They will get bigger, but not nearly as big as the Laura Pedlum. But unfortunately, I had Laura Pedlum down here. They didn't love it in the shade. They were small, unhappy. So if this salvia, they typically prefer full sun. So it may not get 30 by 30, but if it even gets 20 by 20, it will help bring in that burgundy color. And I am loving it. But we, it's an experiment. Like it's kind of the cutoff right here of where the the shade really starts in the afternoon so hopefully i'm hoping you can see look at the window boxes sun shade so i am hoping it will get enough sun right there to really be happy all right bye for real